You're listening to the Cars of Carlisle Network, podcast episode number 83, Dennis Goddard, Car Show Vendor. Cars of Carlisle is your favorite internationally downloaded podcast about all things automotive. Darren and his CFC team are ever searching for interesting automotive happenings, real stories about real car people, and fun features to inform and entertain you. Each week, the Cars of Carlisle crew brings you show topics ranging from car shows to team adventures to auto racing weekends to behind-the-scenes human interest stories from car nuts that live across town, across the country, or even across the globe. Come join the road trip. Today, meet Dennis Goddard, a guy who knows car shows. A successful entrepreneur, Dennis has owned and operated many businesses in the greater Carlisle area for decades. While he's known in various circles as an antique dealer, landlord, and even as a mannequin guy, it's Dennis's love for music and car culture that brings him to the interview table with Darren. Dennis has been selling hard-to-find vinyl at the Carlisle Events car shows for many years because, as you know, cool cars and cool music go hand-in-hand. It's no wonder why Dennis has built quite a loyal clientele from all over the world, folks who count on him to be vending throughout the car show season at the Carlisle Fairgrounds. It's time to put the needle on the record and play some tunes. So, let's get revved up! Hello and welcome back, Tubers, to your favorite informative automotive podcast. I am your trusted host, Darren, and it is great to have you back with us this week. Just a reminder, be sure to subscribe. We are working real hard to try and build our subscription base, and it is free. There is, If you haven't yet, there's nothing to it. Just go to iTunes, subscribe, rate and review, five stars would be greatly appreciated. But by subscribing... You do yourself a real favor. It's automatically going to queue up every Tuesday night. So whenever you have a chance to take that 30 to 45 minute road trip with with us, that little escape each week, we'll be right there waiting for you. So definitely subscribe. And if you have already done so, please have your friends, family, car club members, you name it. Anybody that likes anything with four tires, let them know about us. And we'd love to have them be part of the whole journey. So let's get into talking to Dennis Goddard. He is a local uh, gentleman who here in the Carlisle area who has been at the Carlisle events shows for years and years and selling records and hard to find vinyl as you heard at the beginning of the show and with that we sat down in a local diner and you can probably hear some background noise but we had a great talk and just want to understand how he got into it and his love of all things with uh, music and, and the fact that it is hand in hand with the car world and he comes to each of the shows each year and uh, people really look him up and miss him if he uh, if they have to not catch up or they can't make a particular show uh, Dennis has made friends from as you hear all over the country and all over the world so I thought what would be a more appropriate uh, trivia question than to ask you about a classic car movie uh, one that I love and own actually on DVD and this came out in 1973 and in this uh, was American Graffiti, and you'll know that there were some really famous names. It was co-written and uh, directed by George Lucas. Uh, Richard Dreyfuss was in it, Harrison Ford, Ron Howard, Cindy Williams, Mackenzie Phillips, um, Suzanne Somers, so some, some big names. And it was featured around teenagers in uh, what was actually George Lucas's hometown. So it was based in, a, in the hometown of George Lucas himself, Modesto, California, and I'm going to give you the, the question here coming up, but in it, some amazing music from the era being played throughout the soundtrack itself is exceptional. And one of the favorite scenes of mine is uh, when the 1932 Ford Deuce Coupe, that's the, uh, the yellow uh, Deuce, was uh, drag racing out on Paradise Road up against the uh, black 1955 Chevy 150 Coupe that uh, Harrison Ford was driving in his uh, cowboy hat. Just great music. So, trivia question is this. Who was the famous disc jockey that was spinning the records from the radio station all night long as these teenagers are out having a great time, drag racing, cruising, uh, living up the the car culture? Who was that DJ? That answer coming up. So now let's head to the diner and talk with Dennis Goddard. 
Hey Cubers, this is Darren and I am talking to you at a diner here in Carlisle and I'm with Dennis Goddard tonight and Dennis is a vendor who's been going to the Carlisle Fairgrounds for many many years and he sells records and he's going to tell you all about how what he sells falls right in line with the automobile hobby and everything. So Dennis, thank you so much for taking time and, and let's, let's start with that because you were just getting ready to say that. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> I think music goes with all kind of uh, transportation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, w whether it be well, the eight track, yeah. the cassette, yeah. then the uh, CDs, mm -hmm. and now the Bluetooth and all of that sort of thing. But uh, uh, there's a market for it, and it's a niche. And uh, I am pleasantly surprised at how many car dealers like my music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I cater to all ages anywhere from somebody that just got his first car mm -hmm. to somebody that can afford a Corvette right, right. And, and still have the players in there right okay so pr primarily vinyl only no the the um, the, the vinyl, of course, you can't play in your car. <laughs> right. Uh, but it would skip a lot. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, yeah. But actually, they do make record players that hook up into your car. I found that out. I did not no know kidding. that. But they, they, uh, it's it's a stationary record player. Okay. Put it on your seat. Plug it in your car, your cigarette light, and it would play music. Wow. I think that's the hardest way to do it because you can always go the eight tracks, which are the 50s and the 60s, then mm -hmm. move up to the cassettes, and then the CDs, and then sure. beyond that. Sure. But uh, uh, I sell a lot of record albums, not only that they play them, but they want to use them in their garage. For decorations, mm. like signs of uh, all these motor companies, Chevy and Ford. There's also they like the rock and roll that they played when they were young and bought their car. Or a lot of records have great artwork of cars. True. And all year long, when the car show is closed, I make it a point. When I go to auctions and people's houses to buy their collections and and uh, antique shows, I look for that sort of thing and save it mm -hmm. all year long. Mm -hmm. So when somebody comes, I will have probably several hundred mm -hmm. of hot rod cars, mm -hmm. regular cars, mm -hmm. um, trucks, mm -hmm. nice. trains. They they like that. Yeah. Um, so that's a market that I've seen. There's also another market beyond that, and it's a, you might think it's strange, but it's mannequins. Yeah, you're the, known as the mannequin guy here. Carl. Yeah, I, um, I'm known as the mannequin guy for probably 21, 22 years. I got in it too by accident. Okay. I used to have a, four hardware stores and had three mannequins that I would use to display in the windows. And every time I did that, I'd always get requests, where did I get them, can I buy them, and can I rent them? <laughs> so when I closed all the stores in the late 1990s, that stuck in my mind. And uh, I saw an ad in Washington, D.C. A guy had a warehouse filled with mannequins and it was an auction and I thought that's a niche that's something Walmart isn't into you can't just go buy a mannequin somewhere right so I went there and I spent I think two thousand dollars cost me almost nine hundred to bring them back because I had to rent a truck and I put an ad in the newspaper, and it went crazy. I got calls from colleges, universities, uh, police stations, um, 
you'd think only a mannequin is for selling and clothing. Right. But it's big artwork. Mm. If you could go on the internet and check out mannequin art, you would be amazed at the creativity of that. And where this comes to play in the, the car business, a lot of guys have a area where they want to display their cars, their trophies, all that. And they want to, the mannequins, they do a car hop. They do a mannequin that sits down in their mm -hmm. 1957 Chevy. Mm -hmm. I've sold a mannequin that lays down. It's called a swimsuit model. And the guy put it on top of a truck. Ah, uh, nice. They want to draw attention. Yeah. And there's nothing like a female lady with long hair to bring attention to your booth. Right. I've sold mannequins at the car show uh, where somebody has a racing suit mm -hmm. from their their history, their younger days. They, just like you'd want to display your military suit yes. from World War I, Civil War, mm -hmm. they want to display the uh, racing suit. Right. So I have sold a number of them. I've sold mannequins that will stand near a car mm -hmm. so it brings attention to that car. Yeah. Uh, anything that they can do is... It's the same way with music. That's right. Um, I am really surprised that over the years a number of fellows that come to me and said, my friends think it's strange that I will come from Pittsburgh or Cincinnati to buy records. But if you're not here, I miss you. Wow. And uh, that's a great thing to, to be a vendor and uh, to be and they, valued like that. Yeah, and they look for me. Yeah. Uh, so I've had, I've set up my music at colleges, at bluegrass festivals, and at certain types of things. And when they open the doors, a lot of times <laughs> the people race to my booth. Uh huh. Because there's only so many of the records. That's true, yeah. They are... You're selling a finite resource. Right. And right now, what I find is the, the supply is not catching up with the demand. Mm. They are producing new records, but in limited ways and much more expensive. And there's something nostalgic about the vintage, too. Right. The same record, whether it was, it was stamped three months ago or something that was stamped 45 years ago it's hard right. to beat the, the vintage quality well you know when somebody comes to my booth and stops to look at my booth at the car show I always say to them welcome to memory lane uh -huh. and it always registers with them and go yeah I bought my first car when I listened to Aerosmith uh huh yeah music and smells conjure an immediate memory. Yes. You will remember um, maybe that date or something about that, maybe a big football game at the high school or whatever it might be. But. Yeah. I remember my first date, real date, at 15 years old and the song that went to it. <laughs> and I still listen to that sure. group from the 50s. Sure. And, uh, and might you share who that is? That is... Uh, the girl? Well, the, or <laughs> the, the song and the band. Uh, it, it was uh, Since I Don't Have You by the oh. Skyliners. Oh, absolutely. That's a, you know, I mean, a classic. I'm a, I'm a big 50s uh, music guy, and I know that one. I mean, it's... Mm. Yeah. What what amazes me about the music... And that hype, that falsetto, or that, that last note. Yes. I've always tried hitting it, never can. <laughs> that and the pretenders. Yeah, yeah. You know, the platters. Sure you are. Excuse yeah. me, the platters. Yep. But also what amazes me about in this business is how many young people have come into the booth and starting their collection. And it was most, I always ask, what made you come in and buy records? 
my parents, I, my grandmother. My grandmother would have Frank Sinatra. My grandmother would have Johnny Cash on. Mm-hmm. My parents would have Barbara Streisand. Mm-hmm. And they'll buy that kind of record to start with. And then they're influenced by the media. Uh, now they're influenced by the groups that have our tribute bands. That's true. Uh, that is very big in the in the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Eagles tribute. Oh, yeah. They were came here to. They're here for the third time in Carlisle. They, if you close your eyes, it's the Eagles band. Mm-hmm. Fleetwood Max was here. I took my son to see. We we went to see uh, the Johnny Cash uh, yes. tribute. Yeah, that was. I took my son to see. Um, Led Zeppelin. Yes. Yeah. Led Zeppelin is probably one of the most popular. I went. I was at that show. And uh, there are probably twenty songs that are mm-hmm. half to half. Yeah. And Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Grateful Dead, mm-hmm. uh, Fleetwood Mac, now Billy Joel. Yeah. Elton John and very much Queen. Oh yeah. Uh, my wife and I went to visit Queen in Pittsburgh. Fantastic. It's one of the hardest records to get a month ago, two months ago. There's only so many inventory. And especially with Bohemian Rhapsody having had the silver screen there a while back. Right, and that's what's happened to Elton John. Yeah. Uh, it's going to happen to a number of different artists. They're going to come out more and more of that. Uh, Elton John is retiring after this year. Yeah. Uh, and then, unfortunately, several deaths have made music being called Michael mm-hmm. Jackson. Um, Prince. Yeah. Prince. The Cars. Right, Rick uh, Kasich. Eddie Mundy. Yep, yep. Uh, a number of different uh, Aretha Franklin, Chuck Berry, those sort of people. And that's part of life, and uh, it creates a different interest. Yep. And uh, how long it will go, I don't know. It's been going for me for about 20 years. And when I started, I really don't know why I started, because I liked music since I was 16. Yeah. When I started 20 years ago, people would say, take them. I have no record player, nobody's playing them. Why do you want them? I couldn't answer. And back then, uh, I built up a collection because of that. But that collection is now harder and scarcer to get. There's, give you an idea, I think the third record store opened in York in the last year. Five years ago, there's nobody. Right, right. There are now three in Hanover. And there's one, two of them going to open. One's open in Carlisle. Okay. It's serendipity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I'm opening a big one in Carlisle Antiques, which will the old open Andrews building, right? in uh, Andrew's mm-hmm. former uh, furniture store. Yeah, right there on North Hanover. Yeah, he has about 100 de- dealers there, hopefully. And it'll add to this demand. Sure. But it also make it harder to buy. Sure. So I'm going to have a music store there with instruments. You know, it's uh, the Beatles have really made music stay in the forefront. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what a catalog. Yeah. yeah. I uh, probably that was the biggest collection I ever bought. Mm-hmm. I spent around over uh, eighty-five hundred dollars on a collection of Beatles. Unfortunately, the guy passed, but he was buying records when records were going out. And he would buy 10 to 20 of the same record. 
and then it was sealed. But then it was, he paid 98 cents, a dollar 49. Those same records on the market today bring 20 to 60 dollars, the same ones. And uh, great return. So I bought a beautiful collection, but a lot of competition online. I'm sure. So, I'm sure. Uh, now, do you do all your marketing as far as like? Do you sell online, or you just sell through your uh, through your in person? I've been doing it for 20 years. I have a van that's decorated with all the the main records on my van. It's a walking advertisement for me. I have been in five antique booths selling my records seven days a week for 20 years. Wow! So. I have passed out thousands of cards. Um, one that really follows through to buy collections. And so everybody knows me around here. Sure, yeah. So I have a good following. Yep. And people remember me because I'll buy everything. Right. And that's why I know that there are going to be people, fans of my show, that are going to be listening who have gone through the grandstand. From, know exactly who you are, have talked yep. with you, have bought from you, and I'm excited for them to say, oh, so that's Dennis, okay, yeah. 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 I'm happy and honored that uh, yeah. I can tell the people. I'll be there this year in all the nine shows. Excellent. Uh, and if they open a, another show of a different, I hope to be in that, but I'm in the Z building, uh -huh. which is a great building. I have to be in there with my type of material. And I'll be selling my all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, I get requests all year long going, I'm coming to the Chrysler show. Uh -huh. Do you have? Right. I'm coming to the Ford show. I, I'm, can I bring you records? Mm. Can I trade you? Do you buy? Yes. I have bought thousands of records from the car dealers there. Mm -hmm. They know that I'll buy them all. Mm -hmm. They know uh, that I'm fair with them. Sure. And they're coming anyway. They'll bring them to the car. That's right. I've traded. Everybody's I've happy. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's a win-win situation. Absolutely it is. It lightens yeah. their load. You get some additional yes. inventory. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. That's and it's, I, I, I feel good about adding to the car uh, shows yes uh, it's not always about a car show right uh, of just the cars right. it's all the other stuff that go with that's right the hobby is far greater right yeah. right and the nostalgia like you said the music the, it's just a lot of elements yeah. that and they make a lot of cars that turn into cassette players mm -hmm. They're shaped like a car, mm -hmm. and you play a car or a cassette on it. Mm -hmm. You play a CD on it. Mm -hmm. I I have gotten a few of them over the years, but they're hard to get. Mm -hmm. Most guys don't want to part with them, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's, it's good. It's good for business. So. That's right. Everybody's making out. That's what's yeah. really good. Well, I want to give you final word. Anything else you'd like to share, or just again, this you're reaching an audience of people that are familiar with the Carlisle Car Shows, have heard of them. If they live, we have we're covering all over the United States, Canada, uh, Latin America, Europe. So there, those that perhaps have not been here, but just anything that you would like to share about your business, about what you do, your passions. It's just well, when you come next year, I have six months of gathering new stuff right. exciting stuff for you um, and and uh, look forward to my friends from Brazil mm. France Germany mm -hmm. uh, that come over to buy not only my stuff but to look at the car parts that's so exciting that somebody will take that expense and come over here and uh I'm, I'm really excited about the area that the Millers are investing in, which is going to come to 
fusion, I don't know if that's the right word, but they've been at it for nine years mm -hmm. and something is going to happen mm -hmm. and it is happening mm -hmm. and you're going to see big changes and I think it's all going to benefit. That Hilton property right the, at, the, at the heart of it all too. Right. Right. And I, I think what's also happening to Carlisle getting uh, tons of of new restaurants, new places to shop, and yes. to entice the buyer to not only bring himself, but bring his wife, bring his children there. Mm -hmm. There's all kind of stuff offered more this past year yeah. than in the years to know. And it looks brighter for the future. A great plan. A great plan. So, look forward to seeing everybody this year. Well, again, here. Be sure to check out Dennis's table. It is so good to have a, a chance to sit down with Mr. Goddard. And, and uh, being a music fan, you know that I have to swing by. And, and uh, now that we're fast friends, say hi and, and check things out. Well, so. Good. Br bring your request. Bring your request and a big wallet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you, Dennis. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Welcome back, guys. We are in Studio A and back from the diner. Thank you so much to Dennis for giving up an evening and sharing his story and a little bit more about uh, how he blends into the car culture and is a real fixture at the car shows here in Carlisle throughout the show season. The trivia question, that, if you recall, was I was talking all about a great car culture film from 1973, American Graffiti. And in that, since we talked about car culture, car music with this episode. What better uh, than to talk about one of the best and most notable voices from that era, the late 50s, 60s, and, and early 70s, and that was the disc jockey from the movie, Wolfman Jack. Uh, given name, Robert Weston Smith. He uh, unfortunately passed in 1995, but he was an American disc jockey known really for um, some great sayings, being really witty and, and uh, cutting with his, with his comments and what have you, but he had such a distinct gravelly voice. And if you've never heard him, definitely do a YouTube to check out uh, the sound of Wolfman Jack and uh, some of his, his great uh, antics from days gone by. And if nothing else, uh, check out the uh, American Graffiti movie. He, uh, he has some good one-liners in that one too. So that's uh, this week's trivia answer. As always, thank you so much for being part of the show. As we are coming through the holiday season, it's important for me to say how much I appreciate every member of the Cars of Carlisle team that they give week after week. And in doing so, we are giving and sharing to each of you. In return, this is your podcast. We simply are up in the driver's seat. We might tune the engine. We might uh, plan the route and get in and drive. But you are the one that joins us each week on these ex this escape, this journey, these road trips from life. And it means the world that you guys are part of it and keep coming back week after week. You are part of the car community. You are part of this family. And we are grateful for you. So for now, I'll end and close by saying drive well, be well, and take care. <laughs>